quite excited to be reviewing a new smart lock. Um, and it's a new smart lock from a Dutch company called Locked. Um, and it's, to be honest, not a company I'd heard of or a smart lock that I'd heard of, but we were approached by them and they very kindly sent us a lockout to review. Um, and I'm pretty excited to try installing this and then reviewing it. Let's take a look. So if I get this, I don't know how you get this out. So we've got a kind of package like that. You can see it all sort of comes in. There's these seals here, which presumably just holding all the box in. So we'll take that out now. So we've got, uh, well, we've got the whole thing there, basically the whole smart lock, including the batteries and everything else. So I'll just give you a good look at that. Um, let's take this little plastic cover off if we can. Oh no, the whole thing comes out. And there's a quick start guide here. Looks like that's basically just a QR code one. So we're pretty much that's it in terms of manuals. There isn't anything else. So I've got a main kind of locking mechanism. Right, I'm really sorry about that guys. I've just dropped the lock on the keyboard and it stopped the video. So I've restarted again. Right, so we've got the lane bit here. This is what fell off. That's what hit the keyboard. So that's the kind of uh, handle to this lock. Um, See, it's a kind of lock on there and there's a little screw hole there I can see. I've got a pull to open on the back here, but that seems to be the main sort of part of the lock. It doesn't feel quite as heavy now as out of the box actually, I don't know why. I've got some battery packs, pretty simple. They don't look to be rechargeable, strangely. Okay, so uh, they are just normal uh, AA batteries. And I've got a, uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, that's a bridge, so that's the bridge. Um, obviously, because I'm in the UK and we have a particularly awkward plug, this won't work in this, but I know in this other box, because I've had a quick look, that there is a UK converter. So that's uh, that's the bridge. So obviously you get that with most things. It looks like there is no Ethernet port on that. It's just going to be a Wi-Fi based bridge, I imagine. Um, right, and then we've got a load of sort of fixing bits, like washers and uh, screws and Allen key. We've got a screwdriver. Uh, which looks to be fairly small for the size of screws in here. Whatever that is, I've absolutely no idea what that is. Over here, we've got the what looks like the locking mechanism. Um, so that's obviously the bit that kind of goes inside uh, the lock itself. So that's what we've got there. These are two kind of faceplate bits by the looks of it. So that's um, just obviously to go over the door itself. Right, that's, that's the little screen thing. That's got a couple of wires going through here. Okay, so you're going to be seeing me going through the locked installation guide on the app here. Um, this is just the first few steps and then I will show you um, what I'm looking at basically in the left hand corner of the screen while you see me installing the lock. It's not quite in sync but it's more or less there. So this is the installation video. Um, we are working at seven times speed on this video so um, it gives you an idea of how long it was taking me. Um, the first part's pretty simple, you just take out the old lock, um, nothing too difficult about that. I did take out the wrong screw at one point, but apart from that it was all very simple. There is a more comprehensive installation guide on Locke's website apparently, but I felt that I didn't need that and I just used the um, guide on the app. That may have been in retrospect a bit of a mistake because there were a couple of bits that weren't quite clear to me. So this is the LCD screen. This goes on the front of your old door handle and essentially it just replaces the lock. I initially tried to put it straight on the door and then realized that obviously the handle had to go in place. That was absolutely clear on the guide, but for some reason that I didn't look at it properly. So this was all pretty simple, um, just a few screws and then you put the door handle back on and that is essentially what it looks like at the front there when you finish, so it's all um, pretty clear. Um, the guide says that you should have a blanket to put on the floor or a towel or something to stop um, the lock falling off and getting damaged and I can see why it does fall out quite a few times during this installation. <laughs> So I tried to use a supplied screw to fix the locking mechanism into place on my door but unfortunately it was too big, it just wouldn't fit. Um, so I had a couple of attempts and then I decided to use the old screw from the previous lock and that worked absolutely fine. So if you do have that problem just remember you can use that screw. So 
So fitting the internal part of the door handle um, was initially pretty simple. Um, you do have to be careful that you don't knock the front out. I did that several times, um, but as long as you keep hold of it, then it's not gonna fall on the floor. Okay, so there's quite a bit of this video cut out at this point just because I spent a long time trying to install the motor for the locking mechanism correctly. And um, I think it wasn't entirely clear on the app, but I'll let you judge that for yourself. Um, in a moment, you'll see why I was struggling and then afterwards I'll show you the solution. Okay guys, so you might see me looking a little bit confused on the other video here. So I'll show you why I'm confused. So. This is obviously where the um, bolt is going to come through from the other side. And I know that in order for that to work, that that is going to have to sit at the same level as the handle on the other side in order for it to open the locking mechanism. But then on this side, I'm really confused because if I have it at the same height as that, which would be up there, I then can't get this bit, this motor in because essentially it just sits where the batteries are supposed to go. So the solution to the problem of the motor was to turn the motor the other way round so that uh, this was at the bottom rather than at the top. Um, it probably should have come to me a little bit quicker, but in fairness, in every single picture that I saw, the lock was, or the motor was the other way round. So it was a little bit confusing, but this was a solution and it worked perfectly from there on. Okay, so once I'd figured out what I was doing with the motor, um, it was all pretty simple. I just followed the guide and connected a few wires, put the batteries in, handle on, and the cover, etc. So yeah, nothing too difficult. I think if I hadn't made the mistake with the motor, then it probably would have taken me about 15 minutes in total to install the lock. So really not very complicated. And as you saw, I've not really had any tools at all other than a Phillips screwdriver. Um, so yeah, that was really it. I wouldn't recommend using an electric screwdriver with this because um, you can round off the screws quite easily. So there we have it, the lock installation is complete and it's looking great. Now we're ready to move on to the bridge and some of the smart features. This is the bridge, it has to be within three meters of your door according to the manufacturer. Um, I think you could probably get away with a little bit more but it is using Bluetooth so you don't want to have it too far. Obviously if you haven't got any electrical sockets near the door then this could be a bit of an issue. The other thing is that it has to have a Wi-Fi signal so you've got to have it in a place where it can reach the Wi-Fi. Um, the setup is very simple so I don't think we need to go into that, it's just a couple of steps on the app. Setting up the lock on the app is really simple and once you've set it up it's really simple to understand as well. I'm always slightly underwhelmed by smart lock apps and that's mainly because all they do is unlock and lock the door but this one does have a few more features. I was really impressed by the low latency, the commands were very quick, as soon as you press the button the action was taking place. Okay, so my favorite feature on this lock is the touch to connect. Um, it's really clever and it's, it's the feature that locks make the most fuss about. And basically what it is, is when it's enabled, it means that the lock detects your phone as you're approaching the door. And then all you have to do is tap one button on the lock at the front and that's it, it's unlocking it for you, which is just so much easier than having to sort of faff around and get a phone out your pocket or get a key out your pocket. You literally just walk up to the door and press one button. So Locke says that batteries will last up to 12 months. I think realistically, it's probably gonna be a little bit less than that. Um, however, if you can, it makes a lot more sense just to buy the locked power kit. With that, you get some rechargeable batteries and a charger, and then you can just top it up as required. The other great thing is that the app does apparently tell you when the batteries are low, so you don't need to worry about being locked out of the house because you've run out of battery. If your phones run out of battery or you need to give one-time access to a guest, then using the little LCD screen on the front is quite a good way of getting in. You just have to type the code in that's preset on the app and then you can unlock the door that way. I worry a little bit about the durability of this screen, but only time will tell. Twist Assist detects that you're trying to unlock the door and it finishes the rotation for you. 
it's a bit of a gimmick but being told what the lock is doing on your apple watch is quite cool and also if you haven't locked the lock properly you do get notified on the watch as well and they also send you an email integration with other smart home services is obviously something that Knox have been focusing on and the list is quite extensive there are a few big brands that are missing here but overall i think that they've done really well setting the lock up in alexa was very simple and once you've done it you can change the settings so that you're actually able to use your voice and a code to unlock the door which is quite cool Okay, so obviously the noise isn't actually that bad. And to be completely honest, this is not a problem that's exclusive to locks. Pretty much every smart lock I've seen has the same issue, but it is a consideration. You can't open the door without making that noise. So you don't want to have it somewhere where it's going to disturb someone or potentially wake them up if you come in late at night, for example. So should you buy this lock? Well, I think actually you should buy this lock. I think it's a nice product. Um, I think it's been really well thought through and I really like the touch to open feature. I think that's fantastic. Um, I don't really like the fact that it's so noisy, but I think I could probably get used to that. Um, I was also a little bit worried about the LCD screen and that breaking, but the lock does have a two year warranty. So I suppose if it did have a problem, you could always get it exchanged. Um, overall, I think the locks are doing really well. The only other thing I would like to see is a kind of card or a fob that you can use to open it so that I could give it to um, guests or people that were less friendly with technology that could just get in just by touching it. Um, it's more familiar to, to people that don't work with technology, but overall, Great product and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to potentially installing these for some of our clients. If you've got any experience with this lock or any kind of comments on the video, then please do put them in the comments below and I'll look forward to speaking to you next time. Thanks very much for watching the video and um, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, bye.